What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki third party tiny itty bitty, itty bitty, bitty, bitty Transformers review, we're going to be taking a look at something new from New Age, and it is the Legendary Heroes Lord of the Black Mountain. And this is their uh, 23B, which is a remold of their uh, uh, Galvatron. And it's a Lord of the Black Mountain Heralder. Heralder? Her Heralder? Either way, it's their version of Traxxas, or I'm sorry, Straxus. Um, was another like crazy ass Decepticon tyrant that actually ruled over the Dark Mount, hence the Black Mountain. Uh, this is very uh, comic book, I believe it was UK Comics exclusive, and here he is uh, basically trying to destroy um, Optimus Prime. And he did apparently really wreck and rip apart Optimus Prime in the comic books, uh, from what I saw. And, uh, I think this is actually a reference to the Dark Knight, uh, you know, when Bane broke his back. Was it Nightfall? I think that was Nightfall. Either way, so, very cool comic books inspired character, and, uh, basically reusing the, uh, Galvatron mold to do it, because in some ways, they had similar things. We'll look at that, so. And we come over here, we got Legendary Heroes, we got Obligatory Robot, and, uh, Other form i guess it's supposed to be a canon of sorts it, they just interpret it through a mold they already have it's a thing okay so you got legendary heroes very nice image right here except for the fact that that is like protruding way through his hand so that's something i gotta look into i believe if i'm looking yeah okay so he's using the other hands for that so that's what's going on there that's the thing i'll have to do get new age age 15 plus hey that's me i'm right in the middle of that 2020 made in china is what it is same stuff here same stuff down there, same stuff down there, and that's a box. Uh, you get the instructions and everything else like that in the box, which is cool. So, let's move on and take a look at him. Alright guys, so here we have the Herald, or Straxus, and looking really cool. Now, I'm going to show off, just real quick, an image from the comics. Um... So this is basically about as good a comic shot as you can get. You know, here's a couple different images. So you can see they really, really, even though they're straight up reusing the Galvatron mold for most of it, you know, you can see the extra work they've done to make him look the way he's supposed to. And then there's kind of an IDW uh, picture as well. Bit different, but same kind of details. So it's actually really, really neat that they did that. So, but as it goes, He's pretty cool. Uh, this thing is painted to the nines. There's only a few spots that I think are not painted, like the hips and the elbows here. Everything else is just ridiculous. This metallic blue paint is just absolutely fantastic. Gold paint across the chest, red paint here on the triangle bits, silver paint down here on the vents, gold paint here on the belly and the belt buckle, as it were. You got some tampo triangles to match the chest, though they should have added a little bit of black lining in the chest, I think it would have looked better. And you got silver paint, black paint back here on the uh, back here on the tank treads, so to speak, and then kind of gunmetal color back here, silver color on the thighs. It's just ridiculous, just like Galvatron was. Super, super ridiculous. Oh, I even forgot a little bit of silver paint right here. So looks very nice. And then if we come in on that face sculpt. As best I can, you see he's got some gold eyes, gunmetal mouth plate. I don't know if it's technically a mouth or more like a vent, it's hard to tell. And then that red right there and that little triangle. I think if he has a Decepticon logo, it's supposed to go right there. But it's one of those things where it's like, okay. Um, so we got to do a comparison real quick, at very least, to the stand, uh, you know, straight up Galvatron. And uh, you can see, exact same mold for most of it, but the chest... And the thighs, like you lose the huge uh, thigh armors. Uh, so the thighs are actually a completely different shape. Uh, chest is a completely new piece. Head, obviously, a completely new piece. But that's about it. Like, there's not a whole lot of other... Oh, no, I guess the forearms are different, too. I didn't realize. Does that mean... Oh, yeah, okay. So the next one we're going to look at also has different details in that regard. So that's pretty cool. I mean, like, the fact that they're getting mileage out of this mold is really interesting. And, like, he doesn't necessarily really share the design of Galvatron. They just found a way to get a similar a similar bot out of him. 
um, which is cool. I, I'll give them a ton of credit. Like that is that is a very very different thing. So enough of that. Uh, articulation is exactly the same as Galvatron, so no real reason to show that off. If you want to go watch the Galvatron review, or you already did, you're good on that front. So let's talk accessories. Uh, right off the bat, he comes with a buttload of hands. Excuse my blue nails. Uh, I did some painting. And didn't cover myself. Okay, so these are exactly the same hands as Galvatron came with. The expressive hands, the pointing hands, whoop de doo Now what's important is these hands. So these have a bigger hole, as weird as that sounds. So they are trigger holding hands, um, and you might as well just go ahead and replace them. I don't think it's going to cause a huge ruckus if you leave them in place of the standard hands. I don't think it'll be an issue for transformation. What's really strange, uh, they did leave the tab on the arm, despite the fact he does not have an arm cannon. Uh, find that weird, but hey, it is what it is. And you need those hands to utilize his main weapon, which is this cool pickaxe. Pretty neat. Not gonna lie. It's even got a little bit of a tip to the thing, because eventually this becomes the barrel of his alt mode. But the original hands are way too tight. It can only like, get around here. But these, apparently, can let you really hold the pickaxe like it is. And that is, like, his primary weapon in the comics. Other than just flat out beating the crap out of people. You know, being super strong and, and whatnot. So, that's really freaking cool. Um, I don't have any other New Age uh, figures around at the moment for comparison, realistically. Uh, so, here it is next to that third-party rat trap that I looked at last year. Go watch that review and see how angry it makes me. <laughs> But that's this is about the same scale as a current core class uh, transformer. So if you saw the Rat Trap review that I did, that's he's roughly the same size. I guess I do have a sound wave that's technically for next time. But here he is next to a sound wave, so he's sizable, you know. And then finally, next to a Wally Meister, so you know Wally's about half his height. So. That's pretty cool. Now, because we have seen the horrible, horrible transformation for uh, the Galvatron, we're going to skip that and save everybody some time. I know transformation sucks. If you need to see the transformation for Galvatron, or you need to see how he gets from one mode to the next, I have a video for that. I believe it is my Taro video to get him to uh, cannon mode. So if you need to go watch that, I will link it up above. I will do the same thing for the next review. Uh, because the same exact figure, but slightly different parts. So we're just going to jump to him being in alt mode. Cool? Cool. All right, guys. So, um, yeah. So that took way too long. So I got I had to get all of my versions of this mold into uh, alt mode, and that took a very long time because... Honestly, the transformation is very difficult on this guy. And um, I, I always screw up the part where you have to flip all of this around so that it's facing the opposite direction. I always screwed that up. I finally figured out exactly what to do about 90% of the way through the, this one's transformation. So uh, this distracts us at his like kind of almost very end of the thing here. So we'll take his pickaxe as it is and then fold that flat and then you want the kind of pointy end to come up and then plug that in that is an incredibly loose fit like that is absurdly loose um so there are some fitment issues here and there one thing that is different once you can once you get to the arms this piece right here does plug in very nicely into the forearms and really make that a solid connection, unlike on Galvatron. Um, it feels like the feet have a little bit more of a problem with uh, staying out of the way of the knees. Maybe that, maybe I do have that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to go. Um, also, you can spread this out a little bit wider, make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, these little tabs here keep getting interfered with or popping out. Uh, so, I mean, the transformation and the alt mode with this this mold are the weakest part of it. The bot mode paint and stuff like that is definitely the best part of it. Now, uh, I do have an image of the comics version here. Uh, I'll try to set it up in such a way 
know you could see it. Hey, focus on that. Thank you. Um, so it definitely is implying the alt mode, which was very similar to Galvatron's uh, like fusion cannon, so that makes sense. Um, and then speaking of Galvatron, let's go ahead and bring him out, which even he, you know, the original mold was kind of a pain in my butt. I'm not going to lie. So let's spread these out just a little bit. Uh, this part down here keeps popping off. It's like super easy to pop off, but you can see there it is next to its brethren. I guess you could fold the toesies up for all that it's worth, you know, like that. I don't believe, maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, there's no way to like fold this over and like tab it in or anything. I think this is exactly how it's meant to be. If I remember correctly, you always had Galvatron's feetums like sticking out like that. But you can see obvious, obvious, same mold as obvious. Um, like I said, these little tabby things here kind of suck and don't stay in place half the time. So alt mode is the weakest part. I mean, it's definitely doing the Galvatron thing. It's just not great. And I mean, even reapplied to a completely new figure, new character, uh, still not 100% great. But I mean, at least it, look, it looks different enough, which is cool enough in my book. So ultimately... If you really want a cool version of a character that gets virtually no love, I only saw like a, a like maybe two versions of, of Straxus at all, ever. Um, I don't even think he has any third party except for this version. Like there's no MP or or even Chug Scale versions of Straxus that I could see when I searched for it. Um, so this is one of the only ones we do get. And, you know, this, this being loose bothers me. Um... That just that that hole is not tight enough, as it were, or that peg is not big enough, as it were. But you know, it's it's interesting. I'm not going to keep him in this mode at all. You know, um, if anything, what I might do, I don't even know what to do with him, to be totally honest. Um, unless they give us something of more people under his command or something like that, maybe I'll make because I want to do dioramas in the future, and I got to figure out what I want to do with these figures, especially considering most of them are with city bots or big old combiners. Maybe a dark mount, an, an interesting looking like dark mount display, something to that effect. <clears throat> but either way, so that's going to be it for this review. Hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you even knew about this character at all. And uh, if you have this mold, uh, is it one of the more complicated, like needlessly complicated ones that New Age has done recently? Looks great, painted great, hard as hell to transform. So, but guys, I'll leave it at that. And Remember, as always, keep on nerding.